Hi guys, welcome to Winsome Cottage. My name is Hannah. I'm so excited that you decided to join me today. It is another glorious day here at the cottage. I actually have something to show you that we did earlier this year. We moved a fairly large shrub hmm, right around Memorial Day, a little bit before, and it was very, very difficult to get out. It was uh, the variegated willow that you may have seen in a, a video where my dad was working on pruning it so we could move it. Um, we've moved big shrubs before, uh, and we've actually moved this one before. It started out its life in my house in the city when I moved in. I didn't quite like it, and it, my dad had a spot for it, so it moved up here. Uh, in preparation to move it, we'd really cut it back, and I wanted to document the process. It was actually quite difficult to move, a lot more so than we had anticipated. So I decided to wait to see how the transplant took before I posted this video. So right now, let's go back to right before Memorial Day and see how this whole project got started. I don't know if you can tell, but it's lovely and cool here, very misty. We got a ton of rain last night. I think we probably got two or three inches. So everything's really soaked, it's nice and cool. We've got a little bit of sun for the next two days, but then it's gonna be in the 60s and 70s for a week or two which is a perfect time to move this plant. It is quite sizable, um, so we're gonna have to take some precautions. Uh, and let me quick show you where it's gonna go and one of the things that my dad is doing to prepare this space. Okay, this is actually over where the willow is going, which is at the apex of our property. And my dad dug a pretty massive hole that he's gonna pre-fill. Um, What'll, this will be really nice to hear because it'll provide some screening to some of our neighbor's buildings. And then it'll also be a really bright spot as you come up the road and look at the house. So uh, it's probably gonna take a year, maybe longer for this to establish and grow, but it'll get 20 feet tall. So it'll eventually fill this space. We got a ton of rain last night. So this is what this hole looks like. Dad's about to fill it and make it into a slurry that can sink in before we move the plant. How much water do you add for the slurry? I literally... Eyeball it? No, I'll fill it till it's underwater. Okay. I'll stir it in, make sure it's all uh, wet. Because I think at the end of the day, when we, when we bring the, 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 the shrub over, we want to essentially just put it in there and just rock it in, wick it, wiggle it down. Okay. So there are no air pockets, and then we'll let that water drain away and top it up with some soil and some, just the height. Okay. So I guess it's a, I don't know if it's the right way to do it, but it's always worked in the past. And it gives <laughs> us maximum mobility in moving the shrub. Okay, well, he finishes preparing the hole he dug so that hopefully it's a seamless transition. I'm gonna grab some Biotone starter fertilizer for us to add when we put it in. And I also wanna show you what's gonna be going into the space where this is coming out of. Isn't this beautiful? This is a Blood Good Japanese Maple. Um, it's got really pretty foliage. It's like larger leaf than some Japanese maples. Right now it's looking a little purpley when the sun hits it, it's very red. And I think against the yellow of the house, you can see it a little bit right there. It's gonna look even more red, which is really exciting. As you can see, he's filled it up now. There's a bag of um, tree and shrub mix soil mixed in there with some nice things to get it started. You might be able to tell our soil here is extremely sandy. Um, we are ooh, about a mile and a half of that away is Lake Michigan, quarter mile away is sand dunes. So this is just very sandy. Um, so it's got good drainage, but we like to amend locally for shrubs. So this is what it looks like. We're not gonna put too much more soil in it until we can see the size of the root ball we're gonna be able to get. And that'll give this a chance to drain a little bit. Uh, like I said, we got a ton of water last night which means that the water level right now is kind of high. Next, we are actually going to go uh, and get the plant out and see how big of a root ball we can get. To prepare for this, we pruned it way back. It's still probably gonna be sad for a couple of days, um, but it's a nice time for us to do it because it's gonna be rainy and cool. My dad can put a hose on it every day and it should pull through pretty, pretty well. It is located back here on the side path. 
you can see the evidence of all the rain we got last night it was quite a lot very quickly but this is it this is what we're going to be pulling out and we'll be putting that Japanese maple in this general area. This hoot toot neander ground cover, it's also known as chameleon, never plant it. It is damn near impossible to eradicate, which is what we're trying to do now because it was recommended to us by a landscaping company and we deeply regret ever putting it in because uh, it chokes plants out, it, it got, puts, it it spreads by rootlets which go two to three feet down so it's really hard to dig out uh, and it's just awful anyway side note this is the willow this is what's going to be taken out i don't think the japanese maple will go exactly where it is uh, but it'll be close in this general area to act as a nice contrast against the house here as a side note our blue meringue just beginning to pop which is really really exciting okay a couple things to point out about this um bush this actually came from my house probably about five six years ago um that the previous owner should put in it's not really my thing and it was taking out uh, taking up a, a momentous amount of room like a ton and i didn't want it so i said hey dad do you want it so we had this big hole so we thought we'd put it here um it grows incredible incredibly like this uh, is probably about mm, five feet smaller than it typically will get in a year and we cut it back like this every year and it regrows. It's very pretty with a new growth taking on this like pinky color. Um, the deer might nibble on it a little bit but if it turns into a tree we don't really care uh, versus a shrub um, and it's not something we bought, have invested a ton of time in and particularly love. It's We have a great space for it that we're going to move it to. But if this does not survive, it's okay for us. Um, again, this is something that was at my house. I didn't want, I took it out and we don't want it here anymore uh, because it becomes a maintenance issue with the path. Uh, so we're hopeful that it will take, but it is an older plant, which sometimes makes it harder to move. Okay, we have encountered uh, a little bit more difficulty than we thought we would have, which is not usually surprising considering how long this has been here. But I thought I would show you where we are right now and what our plan is right now. Okay, you can actually see we've dug a trench around the um, the base of this. We've then we've been cutting roots out as we see them. Any of the white rootlets are this hoot hoot neo crap that we don't like. Now we're just rocking it back and forth, trying to find some of the bigger roots that are holding in place to cut it. And we're probably gonna basically move this thing bare root. Okay, so we're just watering it in, finishing up, but here it is positioned. I'm gonna actually give you like a 360 view. It's actually how you see it as you drive up, as you leave the driveway. I think it was really hard because it's gonna get a shot of like sun from like 11 to one-ish on our side. Uh, and then as 
you see our neighbor's side, and this is actually on his property. We had permission to plant it. Uh, I think he was actually excited about it. So as you drive up to our house, this is what you'll see. It'll be a nice little like framing feature, which will be nice. And even as you drive up to our neighbor's house, it'll help to find their yard a little bit too, which is nice. Uh, our neighbor's yard also has this clearing, which means it's gonna get a good shot of evening sun on this side. So we positioned the new growth exposed over here because we expect it will fill in with time, which is good. This is also from their house how to look. It actually is nice because it'll help screen our other neighbor's stuff from them too, which is exciting. Are you pleased with it, Dad? Not bad for not bad for a free shrub. I didn't Am want. I with it? Yeah. <laughs> we built a little moat and just filled it with water. We're gonna probably fill this with water what three or four times and put a and slow we'll, hose. Yeah, we'll let that drain and we'll top it back up so it's, uh, we'll fill it again. We, I think we'll probably do that for the first day or two, a little less frequently after that. Just make sure we keep it uh, moist wet essentially yeah and you can see i'm a little surprised this basal growth has not shown any signs of stress yet it will it'll like wilt but it'll pop back up but the fact that it's not yet stressed i'm taking as a good sign you may have seen me um put a lot of biotown starter fertilizer in we really packed it so that hopefully that helps stimulate root growth and get it established well i think it'll really like this area which is good and hopefully it'll fill in and even if the deer eat it a little bit it'll be okay because it's got this really nice trunk structure which is architecturally interesting i'm gonna be honest i might not post this video until i know that it's going to have survived so hopefully i will end this video with maybe a two or three week update to show you that it's still surviving and we'll check in then so today is right before memorial day it is the 26th of may so maybe we'll do an update before I post this video just to kind of show you how it looks um, and how it's progressing. So I guess future me will give you an update. Now that we see how it started, let me walk on out to it. It is um, actually about July 9th, 9th-ish. So it's been in its place for quite some time now. And it, I am happy to say it has taken better than we could have dreamed once we got that bare root, root ball out. Like it was quite large. We'd prepared the space, we prepared the shrub, but moving things that had been in place for seven years and it's probably 10 to 15 years old, it's a risk that we wanted to take because we had nothing to lose. Uh, and I'm really happy to say that it has paid off so far. We'll have to see if it survives the winter, but it's had about six weeks to root in it's doing really well and I can't wait to show it to you. Okay, and here it is now. We've actually come in and cut it back a couple times. Uh, not enough to give it more stress, but just enough to help um, it along. Sometimes when you transplant things, having a really large leaf canopy is difficult because it has to, the, the roots that are really small have to support the watering of leaf canopy. We've lucked out up here. I know at home my summer has been excessively hot. That's not been the case in the cottage. It actually hasn't been as warm as it usually is and they've gotten a lot of rain. So what a great year to have transplanted this. Uh, it's looking really healthy. In fact, this is like newer growth, I think, since we actually planted it. We did cut back some. You can also see that we haven't been the only ones cutting it back. I think if I show you over here, there's definitely been some nibbling going on down here from deer. So that's a bit of a bummer. You can also see some of that dang hoot tootnia. We've been coming in and pulling it out to try and keep it out of the space. So I'll have to come back and do that later. But the deer have kind of nibbled it once and that's it. So they're not supposed to like this. It's supposed to have higher deer resistance than other plants. Kind of get a little bit better idea of what the structure looks like. So even if it does kind of have a, a deer, what, what we call a deer line, so where the deer reach it, that's okay because it'll, this thing can grow up to 20 feet tall. Uh, and so it'll turn into more of a tree, a shrub tree. But 
I'm gonna back, see if I can back up. This sun right now is in an interesting position. You can also see that these grasses have really picked up, but it provides such a nice little pop of brightness because of its variegated leaves there that I just love. And it's helping starting to screen some things out, which is great. I'm really glad that that took so well. We were very worried about it because, I mean, as you guys saw, we had to like chop major roots out to be able to pry it from the earth. And we had no idea how it was gonna go. I'm walking down to where it used to be so I can show you the Blood Good Japanese Maple, which we planted the same time that we uh, took it out, but I didn't get it filmed because I actually had to drive home and my dad planted it. So let me go show you what that looks like now. Here is that Japanese maple. Please ignore the apple tree. It had been up there, but it needed to come down uh, to be treated for some spot. Uh, but look at it. I mean, I think it's loving life. It didn't have any kind of shock. It's looking a little darker purple than we'd anticipated. But I think we can agree it looks really good. It's nice and healthy. It, um, I just love these leaves. We. Discover it had been on a pole, which we've added the support because, as you might have seen in the video from when we planted it, and you can hear a little bit now, this is um, a very windy spot. So we've added this to support it. We also undid uh, the leaders up here so it can kind of uh, flow out a little bit more. So I'm trying to get a better a better view of what it looks like but i think the the look up against the house it's just a lot more striking it'll fit this space better and this is eventually going to be a bedroom right now the basement isn't finished so this will actually provide once this gets taller and we limit up a little bit it'll provide a much more like easy breezy view down into the water so that's how that project ended up uh, I'm glad we waited because I wanted to kind of know uh, how to frame the video. Like, don't do what we did, which, to be honest, maybe you don't want to. It was a big risk that we knew what we were doing. We didn't have a lot invested in it. And it might not be a choice that you choose to make in your own yard if you have different circumstances. Um, but I'm really glad it did work out. I'm glad that I got to share it with you. And we'll get to kind of keep track of it as the season progresses and check in after next winter because that is actually the biggest test of any transplant. We'll also be able to check this guy's progress in the videos that come. So I'm gonna go and film a garden tour that'll be posted this week. So make sure you tune into that. But thank you so much for watching today and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.